Hey, this is Corey from Wolfpack Woodcraft, and this is a series where you get to ask me a question, whether it's about camping, backpacking, hiking, bushcraft, woodcraft, survival, preparedness, whatever it is, leave it in that comment section down below, and I will try to answer as many questions as I can. Also, make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell so that when I do make videos answering your guys' questions, you get notified and can get your answers right away. So, with that being said, let's jump in to today's question. So today's question is how do I pass the time when I am solo camping? When I'm completely isolated from the world and I have no one to talk to or communicate with, what do I do to prevent myself from getting just extremely bored? And the answer is a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of things that I do. I have a lot of examples here on the table. I will leave links in the description box of a lot of these products so that you too can help pass the time. And the main point that I want to get across is when you first go out, those first couple times seem like you're going to be extremely bored. You're going to have nothing to do. But the truth is, is those are going to be the times where you learn what you're going to do next time. And so for the very first suggestion bring a notebook or a notepad or a right in the rain notepad is which I got here and give yourself notes okay because what you're going to find is a bunch of holes in your system you're gonna write down how you slept did you sleep cold did your back hurt when you woke up now leave yourself a bunch of notes because what you're going to be able to do from there is look at okay when I woke up, my back hurt. I need a new sleeping pad. This one was too small. Uh, it was too soft. It was too hard. Uh, list all these things. Leave notes for yourself because what's going to happen is you're going to get home. You're going to have all these things rushing in. The laundry needs to get done. The dog needs to go out. The dishes need to be done. All these things are going to rush back to you and you're going to forget a lot of the things that happened on the trip. And so, Give yourself notes so that you can go back and study what you need. Uh, if you need a warmer sleeping bag, if you need a cooler sleeping bag, maybe you had a 20 degree sleeping bag and you need a 50 degree because you were way too hot, or maybe you need a negative 20 because you were way too cold. Uh, leave notes on how things went. Uh, was it easy to get a fire started? Did the fire starting material you brought with you work well? Or did it not work at well at all? Like leave yourself notes and then the next time you go out, you'll be able to adjust and figure things out. And so the main thing that you're going to do the first few times you go camping is upgrading your gear and figuring out what works and what doesn't work. You're gonna figure out the pros and the cons of different systems. You're gonna take pieces of kit that you do not like and just try to upgrade it the best you can and so a lot of your time is going to be spent comparing this to this does this work does that work what does this do that this doesn't do what does this do that this doesn't do right and that is going to accumulate a bunch of time <clears throat> and you're going to eventually every single trip is going to get easier and easier and easier and easier because your gear is going to make you more and more and more and more comfortable all right, another really good way to pass time your first couple of trips out is bring some books. Uh, these are two books that I just started reading. This is a 100 Deadly Skills Survival Edition. This one is Tools for Survival. Uh, they're both pretty decent books. I like them a lot. The thing that I have noticed personally is when I read at home, I read and I try to finish the chapter before dinner's ready. I try to finish the chapter before the buzzer on the dryer goes off. I, I'm constantly rushing or I feel guilty, right? The kitchen is a mess. I should be cleaning the kitchen, but I'm reading instead. And so I'm trying to just hurry up and get the chapter done because I really should be cleaning the kitchen or I really should be out in the garage fixing whatever it is I need to fix. And so you have all this pressure while you're reading at home where when you're in the woods, you have nothing better to do. And so you can really slow down, soak in the information, soak in the, the, the what you're trying to learn. You can learn it a lot easier and you can soak it in a lot better because you don't have the burdens of 
washers and dryers and internet and email and texts and phone calls and uh, dinner bells and you don't have any of those distractions. It's just you doing what you want to do. No one's judging you. No one's pressuring you. No one's anything. You literally could just read from the time you woke up, from the time you went to bed, and there'd be zero consequences, right? And so I really like reading when I'm solo camping because I can. I can absorb the information a lot better. The other thing you're going to want to do as you, the trips start to stack on top of each other is you're going to want to learn different skills. And one of those skills is going to be fire starting. Now this is the ferro rod that I learned how to start fire with. And you can see that it's almost worn out. A ferro rod like this should last way longer than this one did. But as I was learning, I didn't have anybody teaching me how to do this stuff. And so I would just scrape, 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 scrape. And it took me a long time to figure out that it's not the amount of sparks, it's what I'm putting the sparks into. And that's what next video is gonna be about, so make sure you subscribe and tune in next week because we're gonna talk about fire starting. But these are all skills that you're gonna wanna learn. And so another skill that I learned while I was out camping was how to sharpen my knife. And so, again, at home, you're kinda rushing, you're kinda, I got 20 minutes before dinner, let me quick try to sharpen a knife real fast. Let me quick try to do this before I have to go to work, before this, before that. Uh, the dog is barking because there's something outside or they have to go outside. And so you have all these distractions and all these things preventing you from really laser focusing on learning the skill. And so when you're out camping, you can pay attention to the angles. You can pay attention to the how fast or slow or how accurate everything needs to be and you can really learn a lot while you're at camp because again you're you can just you're just sharpening a knife and it doesn't matter how long it takes it doesn't matter if it's good or bad and not none of it matters you know you don't have to worry about outside distractions you know there's nothing to worry about the only thing you need to focus on is just the sharpening the knife right and so learning different skills is a really good way of passing the time. Another thing is the radio. Now the radio itself is a really good way to pass time, whether you're listening to music or the news or whatever it is that you like to listen to to help pass time. But the other thing that I like about this is I can, so where I go camping, there's zero cell signal, like zero. I couldn't make an emergency call even if I wanted to. There is zero cell signal, but there's a lot of radio stations that come in. There's a lot of radio, the weather band and all these things. And learning how to fine tune, just barely touching that knob so that you can get in different channels. It's a skill that's really fun. It's fun to see how many channels I can get in, uh, even with zero cell signal. And also, you learn things about your gear by just playing with them, right? I know that this will last about an hour and a half if I don't touch it, all right? It's a crank radio, and so I can crank it up to get power. It's got a solar panel on the back. But if I'm in my tent playing with this thing, trying to get as many channels as I can out of it, uh, it lasts about an hour and a half. And so every 30 minutes, I'll give it some cranks to kind of juice it back up, and that seems to make it last a lot longer. But I know that because I played with it. I used it, and I did what I needed to do so now I'm way more familiar with this radio than most people are just because I took the time to play with it and do what it does and see what it can and cannot do again and so again just invest the time in learning different skills uh, another skill that I learned is I have a speed stitcher here now I got this out of a battle box and when I got it I didn't think I'd ever use it I was I threw it in a box somewhere and I just it just sat there forever and I never used it. I never even really intended on using it. But I was going to go camping. I really didn't have anything that I was going to be doing that I was actively doing anyway. And so I had a scrap piece of webbing and then this. I threw them in my bag just for something to do. If I got bored, I could do this, but I didn't intend to do it. Well, I was at camp, I got bored, and so I practiced and I stitched. I made one stitch 
and I couldn't believe how strong this was and how easy and fast it was. It was super easy to stitch this up and because I learned how to use this thing at camp, I came home and the very first thing I did is I made bedroll straps. And now a lot of people ask me where I get these straps to and it's essentially just webbing a cinch buckle that I got off of old uh, MMSS sleeping bag and I stitched it myself. I made these myself. I have this camouflage one, I have black ones, and I use them to attach the wool blankets to the bottom of my backpacks. And this is a skill that I learned at camp because, again, I was bored and because I knew that I didn't have a lot to pass the time, I just threw the speed stitcher in my bag just in case, and now I'm able to use and fix a lot of different things. I've used that speed stitcher a lot. And so learning skills is going to be one of the things that keeps you probably occupied the most. You're gonna be sitting there with a speed stitcher and it's gonna be afternoon and then before you know it, the sun's going down and you gotta get fire started and dinner going and you know, you're gonna wanna be proactively getting things done before it gets dark out because a lot of these things can consume a lot of time. Once you get lost in it and you just get focused in it, it's crazy how fast the time just blows by. The other thing that I have is a slingshot. This is another skill that I'm currently trying to learn. I started last year, I haven't used it at all this year, but next year hopefully I can use this more often. And so again, just, just all these things that the more times you go out, you're going to want different things. You're gonna to wanna to learn different things. You're gonna to wanna to experience different things. And all of these kind of compound into how to pass the time on your next trip. So going back to the original where you find all these holes in your system and you buy gear, uh, I want to touch back on that because what you're going to find is you're going to find things that you like that become holes later, okay? And so one of the examples that I have is this flashlight. This is a really nice small flashlight, fits in my pocket. I like it because if I have to go to the bathroom or I have to do something, I can light up the way to go to where I need to go. I can find my way to the tent without tripping over the guy lines or anything. So I really liked having the small little flashlight. It's a nice little flood light so I could see everything in camp. But what happens is, is you hear something off in the distance and it kind of startles you a little bit and the flood light stops at the tree line. Okay, and so you can't see what it is and it almost makes it worse because now you're startled because you heard something big in, the, in that general area and you cannot see what it is. And then your brain starts to make up scenario. It's a bear, it's a this, it's a that, right? And so then you end up buying a big spotlight that can shine through the trees, shine through everything. And you shine that and you can see that it's a deer, right? Something, you hear something, you shine it, it's a deer. So you thought this was awesome. Your first few trips, perfect. I like the floodlight. I like being able to see what's going on around camp. And then all of a sudden that situation presents itself because as you get the experience, you're going to also experience different events and encounters that you didn't have to previously encounter. And so this is where the different gear comes in. Well, then you're going to be sitting there with your floodlight doing one of these things, trying to use both hands, and then you're going to invest in a headlamp, right? And you're going to invest in a big, fancy, expensive headlamp because you think it's going to be best, but then it's heavy on your head and it's kind of inconvenient and it doesn't have that nice flood that your flashlight had. And so then you buy something that's lighter and more flood, but then again, so you hear something and the headlamp stops at the tree line and then that's where you find your sweet spot. You find the headlamp for around camp and then the spotlight for when you hear things. And so just because your notes said that this flashlight was the best flashlight and I don't need another flashlight, this is the best, doesn't mean that that's always going to hold true, right? As the more times you go out, 
the more things you're going to encounter, the more holes you're going to find in your system. And so it's this constant evolution of finding holes, fixing them, finding new holes, fixing them, finding new holes. And so you're never going to really get to a point where you're just, I learned it all, I've done it all, so now I'm just bored again. All right, so you started off bored because you didn't know what to do, and now you're bored because you know it all. It's never going to happen. You're constantly going to be evolving. You're constantly going to be pushing yourself. And then once you find all these holes, and once you patch all these holes and figure out a system that works really good for car camping, that's when you're going to want to push yourself. You're not going to want to camp where people might be able to show up and camp next to you. You're going to want to hike in. You're going to want to go backpacking. And then you're going to have to learn how to use a map and compass, right? And so you're going to be sitting at camp practicing how to use your compass. One of the things that I would still like to learn that I haven't yet is when I was learning how to use this compass, I bought a really good, nice compass. Again, I'll leave links in the description box down below. I noticed all these different numbers and this arrow, and I noticed all these different things. So I put notes in my notebook and just practice using the compass to find my way. And then when I got home, I took out my notes and I learned what all these different numbers and symbols and things were. And now I have even more to learn, right? So again, it's a rinse, wash, repeat, rinse, wash, repeat. It just keeps building. The skills and everything that you need to learn just continue to grow and build upon each other. And so the more you go out, the more you you want to do next time. And so like I said, I started learning how to use this compass and now I have more that I want to learn about this compass. Yeah, I learned how to make bedroll straps and so now I bought a candle, a candle light and my wool blankets so that I can go more traditional camping like they did a long time ago. And so that's another skill that I want to learn is more traditional camping. And so all these things just kind of compound on top of each other. You'll never really get to a point where you just have nothing to do, right? Worst case scenario, you'll find yourself like I camp in the woods. And so I learned how to start fire with birch bark, uh, fat wood, cattail fluff. But then I went to a prairie where there were no trees, there were no fire, there was no nothing. It was just open fields, right? Well, now I have to adjust again. I have to figure out how to cook, boil water, do what I need to do without a fire. And so then you can go to the middle of the desert, you can go to a rainforest, you can go to all these different places. And so you constantly are learning, which means you're constantly finding holes, you're constantly patching those holes, you're f constantly finding pieces of kit to compare against each other. If I'm going here, I need this. If I'm going there, I need that. And so it's a never ending circle of finding holes and fixing them and you will not be bored. I can promise you that. As soon as you fall down the rabbit hole, there's no going back. You're gonna constantly be finding new things. And so in that comment section down below, I wanna know what do you do to pass the time and also leave questions. Winter's coming and I'm not gonna be able to get outside, but hopefully I can answer as many questions as I can. So next spring, we are all confident and ready to enjoy the outdoors. So thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you on my next video.